Hey everyone, Kyle here. Um, I just wanted to do a very quick video on how easy it is to actually replicate people's voices using artificial intelligence, and then also overlay a dubbed version. So an example of this being how do I um, create a copy of my voice to create audio files for podcasts, or whether it is just to read bedtime talk stories to my child, which I don't condone because that's bad parenting. Um, or even more so, how do you then take a team meeting or a podcast or fireside chat between three or four individuals and dub that into a different language like Dutch or Chinese or Czech or whatever it might be? So on this video, I'm going to show you some of these things that I've done on here and how similar it can be. Um, I've also had the Dutch uh, dubbed version reviewed by someone that actually speaks Dutch because I do not uh, to make sure that it's as accurate as it can be. Uh, but yeah, let's see what happens next. So you can kind of see here the 11 Labs platform. So there's many systems and tools out there you can get to do this stuff. But 11 Labs is one that I've been using for, for quite a while to do some of this work. Um, and as you can see, there's a, a, a URL that I've logged into, I've signed up to. I've got X number of um, characters for translation into different languages or into a, a cloned voice or whatever it might be. And they've introduced some new things now around voiceover studio work uh, or dubbing studio and things which I'm going to cover a little bit in today. And the value of this is um, how do you make content that's relevant for different people and to be consumed in different formats without spending a lot of time, in some cases, creating this stuff. Um, so this is an example I've, I've uploaded, and I'm not going to go through all of the how to do it because it really is simple, right? You go to Voices uh, in the top here, you click on that, you go to upload a audio file, and then it will then um, basically render a, a digital copy of your voice. And all it needs really is 60 seconds of audio with no background noise. And unfortunately, you can get that from most people from Teams meetings or from YouTube videos or whatever it might be. Now, I have to say here, you do need consent to do this. You can't just put people's audio in there and get it to create a copy of somebody. That is not legally and it's not condoned by me either. Um, but to give you an example, I have uploaded a couple of audio files of my voice and I have now almost got it to sound like me. I have recently done this internally in work as a bit of a prank um, to, uh, to really scare someone into realizing how easy this stuff is and to understand that the things that you see on the first uh, instance may not be as they seem. So as you can see here, we have a text-to-speech element. You can do speech-to-speech -speech if you want to, so I can talk to it, and then it would then translate that straight into the uh, replicated voice. But in text-to-speech, really simply, what I'm going to ask it to say is, hi, I am Kyle Davis. All right, so you just got that as me saying it. Now, if I do it this way, and I've added that in, and I've got my UK voice in there, I can generate speech. Hi, I'm Kyle Davis. So it sounds a little bit more kind of uh, southern than I am in the UK. Um, but I can then go into the settings in here and I can change how variable I want the voice to be or how much similar I want it to be to my natural voice. And I can add in exaggerations if I need to. So I've done this with a few people with their consent recently and got it to be pretty accurate, which I won't share on here because I don't have their consent to put their audio online. Um, but again, this is you're talking 30 seconds worth of effort to get to this point. Um, to get the voice sounding more uh, like the individual, you have to upload five one-minute snippets. And if you do that, you will get it sounding even more accurate than what I have here on mine. Now, the other thing I'm going to show you on here is how do we go and dub something over to be in a different language? So I am going to take a snippet of what I've just talked about using this video that I've just recorded, and I'm going to upload it into here, and I'm going to basically say, convert from English to any of these languages in here, but let's pick on Dutch because I know someone that can tell me whether it's accurate or not. I upload the file and I click create. All right. And then when you do that, it will then allow me to download it and play it. So let's fast forward to that section, shall we? So as you can see now, I've, I've basically uploaded the file that I most spoke about a month ago. It's four and a half minutes long. Um, and then inside the settings at the bottom, I've told it only to uh, dub the first minute. And the reason I'm doing that is because I don't want to burn through all my credits and, and end up paying money. Um, but realistically, that's now in there. I give it a name, so it could be KD Dub Test. Right, as an example, I've chosen my English or to Dutch languages. It can auto detect language if we want it to, but for now, I'm kind of thinking I will tell it. Um, you can also link to an uploaded file or to existing doc uh, to videos online, and then you can basically use those to then be dubbed over if you needed to. 
Um, the kind of use cases that Eleven Labs sit behind in social media content, so you can actually put it out there to different audiences, same as media and entertainment, localizing um, short form videos for, for local regions through to marketing and education and e-learning. Education and e-learning is the biggest one for me. Imagine being able to educate at mass in the right language to people that may not have access to skilled resources to educate individuals. Now, for me, that is a great way of getting content available and out there as, as far and wide as we possibly can. Um, as you can see here, I put all that in and then got into there. I'm leaving the watermark on because they will then give me a 33% uh, reduction in character usage, which means in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see it'll say um, dubbed by 11 labs ultimately. I click create down here. You can see some other tests that I did previously, um, but we can now see that it will start to uh, create this file. All right. So we fast forward um, probably about a couple of minutes and that should then give us the file that we're after. Now that it's basically done the KD dub test as we just did a moment ago, we've changed it to Dutch and now I can then download that file. So now that file's downloaded, let's give it a play and see what it sounds and looks like. Hallo allemaal, Kyle hier. Ik wilde even een heel snel videootje maken over hoe makkelijk het eigenlijk is om stemmen van mensen te repliceren met kunstmatige intelligentie en dan ook een nagesynchroniseerde versie overleien. Een voorbeeld hiervan is hoe ik om een kopie van mijn stem te maken, om audiobestanden voor podcasts te maken of om wedstrijdverhalen voor mijn kind voor te lezen. Ik weet het niet en doe dat niet, want dat is slecht ouderschap. Of nog meer. Hoe neem je dan een teamvergadering, een podcast of een gesprek bij een kampvuur tussen drie of vier personen? En dub dat in een andere taal, zoals Nederlands, Chinees of Tsjechisch of wat het ook mag zijn. In deze video ga ik je enkele dingen laten zien die ik hier heb gedaan en hoe vergelijkbaar het kan zijn. Ik heb ook de Nederlandse versie laten nakijken door iemand die echt Nederlands spreekt. Want ik spreek het niet om er zeker van te zijn dat het zo nauwkeurig mogelijk is. Maar goed. So you've just seen a dub video uh, that was in Dutch. Uh, and from feedback I had from Tim Russell, um, who speaks fluent Dutch, gave me a view that it was accurate. And it was um, using a more of a central Dutch kind of accent, which was quite interesting to hear. Because we've done a couple of tests now and we get different types of accents depending on the accent is pulling from me or someone else that's on the, on the video. Um, then I also thought I'd try a different language. So I tried Hindi um, and I've tried uh, Czech as well. Um, so I've got people within my network that speak those languages very fluently. And the feedback is it's somewhere between 95 to 100% accurate from the ones we've done so far. So all in all, it shows that this thing is actually working and doing a pretty good job. And even more so, it's doing it in my voice, right? So you gotta think that the dubbing it's doing is using my kind of tonality and everything else. Um, I hope that video was really useful for you. Um, again, go and have a play, be safe, be responsible, and I'll catch you next time.